<clears throat> oh, that's too loud. How about that? All right. And hello. Uh, so I'm going to kind of count on you guys to tell me if uh, the volume of my microphone is too loud or if the volume of the video games are too quiet. Um, so basically what I'm doing here is, uh, as I said on Twitter, like I'm at work in my office at work because, uh, we have very fast internet here and at home I have very crappy internet. And, um, so streaming at home would be very difficult to do. So, um, maybe I'll work on that for the future or whatever. But, uh, in the meantime, the internet here is like a hundred megabits up and down. So, and, uh, so what I did for today, cause really this is just me trying to figure out like if this is even going to work. So that's why I just have my retro pie. I just brought that cause it's easy. Cause I was already bringing all this other stuff to work, uh, like the capture stuff and a, and a whole computer and, and whatnot. So rather than having to, on top of that, uh, bring a video game console and an upscaler, I just figured I'll bring, uh, the retro pie. I mean, it's, it's good enough, right. Uh, for, for a stream. So um, basically I'm just going to just play through some games and, um, just kind of chat for a while. And, uh, I'm going to just kind of count on you guys to let me know how like the audio levels are and how everything looks and sort of the quality of the stream. I mean, I have the stream over here on my other computer, but, um, you know, whatever. Uh, so I put the, the box art for golden axe up there just cause I, I have to put something cause otherwise Otherwise, it looks awkward if I just have it like that, you know. So uh, that's pretty much just there for no good reason. Although I was planning on playing uh, some Golden Axe. And um, what what I really wanted to do actually was I wanted to show you guys uh, some baseball games uh, just because of uh, some interactions I had on Twitter based on a picture that I posted. And then somebody actually asked me, like, what the best baseball games are on the Genesis. And... Uh, uh, the problem with that is I think there's there's enough input lag with this system that I'm not going to be able to play baseball games very well. But also because I'm here at work, I can't really add more games to the RetroPie because the way you're supposed to do that is over Wi-Fi. And that would be hard to do uh, on the Wi-Fi here. So like one of the games I wanted to show you, I don't have. So we'll save the, the baseball stuff uh, for another time. So um, I also mentioned I got a new webcam. So this is a webcam, uh, right? here and uh that's this uh i got this logitech c920 i'm only showing it because one of you guys recommended that i get this and uh amazon had it on sale because i guess a new one came out or something uh so so i got that uh so that's it uh i'll check the comments here real quick um all right glad to hear you can hear me loud and clear in oregon and um yeah this is way assuming brian that you're talking about uh golden x uh, the PC engine version really is trash and, uh, says Neo Geo has his favorite baseball games. Yeah. I mean, all three of the baseball games on the Neo Geo are pretty good. Um, baseball stars too, I would say obviously is the best, but really they're all good in their own way. So one game I thought would be fun to play is, um, it's going to load a oh, wrong button is Ninja golf. Cause somebody was asking me about Ninja golf the other day and, um, there's not really too many games that make the Atari 7800 something that might be worth having and taking up space in your house but uh, we'll just do normal I think um, I mean there has to be a certain number of games that you have for a system before it's worth owning and I'm not really sure that I think that the 7800 really has enough of those games but uh, but Ninja Golf is definitely a cool game, and I wish it had come out on pretty much any other system uh, or that they had made a sequel to it because this game could be a lot better. So see now, so right now we're hitting the ball. Obviously, we're a ninja, and you can see it's sort of a Japanese golf course. And so you have to hit the ball, uh, but it's not like a three-click system. It's just you just push the button, and the only thing you can do is you can see you can adjust uh, the direction. Um, so... Yeah. All right. So the faster you get the ball uh, onto the green, oops, wrong button, sorry, um, the faster uh, you can get to the boss. There's actually a boss that uh, that guards the green. So 
you see you've got these gophers throwing stuff at you and other ninjas. I'm not going to pretend like I'm good at this game. There's some extra throwing stars. We want to get those. These gophers are extremely I did a dry run of this before I started the stream, and I, I did a lot better. These gophers are really irritating. Okay, so now we move on. Uh, so now we have to hit the ball again. So again, you want to adjust your shot here and uh, hit it again. And again, you just push the button. It's not You can't even like hold the button down for a certain length of time and have it change. So the only thing you're really doing is you're just adjusting. Uh, that was a health upgrade. Uh, the only thing that you're really adjusting is uh, the direction. But you see it's difficult, like if you're in the middle of doing an attack, you can't jump, so you, you have like... You know, you have ninjas coming at you that you're trying to kick, but then you can't jump to avoid the, the crap, maybe literal crap, uh, that the gophers are throwing at you. Well, that's interesting, the gophers only throw one way, so maybe it's better to just hurdle over them. I can't even imagine playing this with like that 7800 Pro Line joystick. That thing was kind of terrible. Okay. Almost there. You can see it down in the corner of the little map. It's kind of showing you like your proximity. Oh, great. So now we're already on the green. I just figured I would show you guys just up to the first boss. We don't need to keep playing this game because I think it's probably a little bit boring to watch. So you have this dragon guy and you have to hit him in the head. So you have to kind of time the throwing of your ninja star uh, with when it's going to get to his head. So this this kind of reminds me of like the bonus levels of the original Shinobi uh, where you have like those ninjas. And so that's it. So I just put them. You don't even get a cool animation or anything. And then it tells you, you know, first hole, you got, uh, you, you made it to the green in two shots. That, that's pretty good. Um, oh, yeah. And there, so you're, I guess you're only playing the front nine. I don't really know. It doesn't tell you par, though, so that's kind of lame. Uh, and then it just keeps going. So I, I don't really want to keep uh, playing this because I can't imagine it being super fun uh, to watch. So uh, I'm going to check the comments real fast, and then we will pick a new game to play. Uh, Retropi, read that one already. Uh, what does YouTube says? Honest question. Do you wear the hat to hide the baldness? Kind of. Um, yeah. I mean, not to hide it. I mean, it's, you know, I, I'm bald. You know, I think I've, I've made reference to it enough times and I didn't even wear a hat in the last episode or whenever that was. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I guess I'm kind of self conscious about it or whatever. And it just, you know, I just didn't like the way I looked on camera without the hat. You know, I kind of figured, well, let me just try doing it at the hat, maybe it'll be okay. And I just watched it and was like, yeah, that's just not a good look. So uh, it's funny though, because normally I don't wear a hat. Like I don't walk around my daily life wearing a hat that often. So um, you can do multiplayer online with the RetroPie. Have you ever thought of trying two player over the internet? That would be cool. Uh, no, I've never tried doing that. I've never, I know there's some emulators where you can do that. I've never really tried messing around with that. Uh, your recent Lego video has got me thinking about getting some old sets again. Uh, just be careful, man. Old Legos are really expensive. Um, that's why, like, you know, like I mentioned that guarded in set that I want to get. It's just, it's like over a hundred dollars. And that was like a $20 set when it came out. Um, this is what Lee Trevino's fighting golf should have been. Yeah, it should have been. Although that's actually a pretty good game, but it would be cool if there, if there was actual fighting, uh, in it. See, the thing is with Ninja Golf, I think it would have been cooler if it was more of a legit, golf game like if you actually had like a three click system and you could like choose your club and then you'd, you'd hit your shot but then you'd still have to go fight to get to your ball to take the next shot like they could have made it a better golf game but I don't know how uh, popular uh, that really would have been uh, someone says any thoughts on the Netflix style NES game platform coming to the switch I, I don't have a switch and I don't really keep up with modern gaming so I don't actually even uh, know anything about that um what else we got? 
Yeah, Jeremy says about shaving the head. I just think shaving my head bald, I just don't think it would look good on me. Like, I I know some guys do that, and they get away with it, and it's fine. I just think that – I don't think I would look good that. And I even asked a couple people, like, hey, what do you think if I shave my head? And they were just like, you yeah, you shouldn't do that. So uh, it's just worse because, like, on camera, like, I have a light in my face, and so it's, like, bouncing off of my bald head. And so that just makes it look, like, even worse, you know. Like, I try to keep my, my hair cut pretty short because, like, who am I fooling? But, you know, like at the intro of the last video, like I hadn't um, I hadn't cut my hair in a while, so it looked especially bad. Uh, anyway, uh, let's get to the next game. So we have to uh, exit out of the Atari 7800 submenu. Oh, here, I actually made a separate scene. So now you guys can just see uh, the menu. So uh, I was thinking we could play uh, some Golden Axe just because that is one of my favorite games. So, um, and that... I, I played a little bit of that, and it seems like it still works okay, even with the um, input lag. So, hopefully that should be all right. So, obviously I'm going to talk about Golden Axe, like, on flashback. Because um, this is one of my all-time favorite games, but, uh, I mean, just since we're all here. Uh, so, I know I mentioned, like, I got my... I got my Genesis for my birthday in 1992. Uh, I'm always the dwarf, by the way. He's the best character, in my opinion, by far. Um, and uh, my friend and I, we kind of got Genesis Genesis's at uh, at about the same time. He got his a little bit before mine, and uh, we both, when we got our systems. Um, Sonic the Hedgehog was a packing game, which is a big part of the reason that I wanted a Genesis to begin with. And, um... And so that was, like, the main game that we wanted to play, but he got Golden Axe somehow. And I don't remember how. Like, he was kind of in the same boat as me. Like, he didn't... Like, his parents didn't have a lot of money. Like, he actually bought his uh, Genesis himself. Uh, and we were both like 14, 15 years old, and he actually bought his Genesis by himself uh, by working. Uh, he had like a little part-time job uh, in the evenings. And so my point is just we didn't have a lot of money to go buying games and whatnot. Uh, plus, we were both primarily PC gamers, and, you know, we used to pirate computer games like crazy in high school. So um, I think we really both wanted the Genesis, really, to play Sonic the Hedgehog. And so I don't know where he got Golden Axe. For some reason, my memory is that he got it from a kid at school. Like, he bought it used from a kid at school. And he used to bring it over to my house all the time, and we would play the game uh, two-player co-op. Because, uh, you know, of course, Sonic the Hedgehog 1, you can't play uh, two-player co-op. And, you know, because we were used to playing computer games, we would generally gravitate towards games that we could play uh, together. And so I think that was part of the reason that we love Golden Axe so much is that we could play it together. And, like, it's even got, like, that battle mode where it's, like, a one-on-one -on -one fighting game. And, like, we used to play that, too, when we would get tired of, of running through the game. Because, I mean, Golden Axe really isn't very hard. So, you know, it's pretty, especially two-player. God dang it. It's, uh, it's pretty easy to just run through the whole game. So, um... But it's fun. Like, even though it's not hard, it's, like, you can always, like, load up Golden Axe you know, and blow through it in, like, 20 minutes or 25 minutes. And uh, I also remember the, the first time I ever played this game, and I, I think I mentioned this when I did... I did, like, that history of uh, Golden Axe video, and I mentioned the first time I ever played it was at a, a Round Table Pizza, which I thought was cool because, you know, Round Table Pizza, obviously, is sort of a, like, fantasy-themed or, or whatever, right? Because it's like the Knights of the Round Table. And uh, so this is, like, the perfect game to have there. And it's also uh, one of the only arcade boards that I have uh, that works. And I only say that because I have, uh, I think I have three arcade boards now. Oh, I died already. It's hard to play this game while talking, but that's okay. Um, I have a couple of Capcom CPS games, but I don't know if any of you guys are really into, like, uh, into playing uh, arcade games. Like actual arcade PCBs, but the original Capcom CPS games are, like, known for having one of the boards go bad. Uh, the A board, it's called. And, uh, the A board is, like, every Capcom CPS game has an A board, and most of them are interchangeable, because none of the ROM data is on the, the A board. But obviously, if your A board dies, then you can't play the game. But you can get a different game, and you can just take that A board and, uh, bring it over. But 
Uh, so, like, I have Final Fight, and I have Street Fighter, uh, like, the original Street Fighter 2, World Warrior, and uh, I can't play either one of them because I don't have a working game board, so... Um, ooh, oh, I wanted to pause it. I, I, got, I got to tell you guys something about that screen, but... Um, so, I, I have a Neo Geo MVS um, motherboard that works. So, I guess I have two. Sorry, I lied. I just forgot about it, but... And I have a Golden... Golden Axe was actually the very first arcade PCB that I bought. Uh, it was like a big part of the reason that I even wanted an arcade machine. And it's cool because it's a Sega arcade machine. Uh, it's like a Japanese candy cab. Um, so it's not... It'd be cool. I mean, if you, even if it was a dedicated Golden Axe uh, arcade cab, I would totally take it. That would be cool. Um, but this is just a candy cab, but it's a Sega Astro City. So uh, I think I posted like a picture on Vine or whatever uh, of me. Um, oh. Ooh, I got lucky right there. I was trying to get fancy. You can, like, get these guys to charge at you, and then you move out of the way at the last minute. Um, anyway, my point is, I just I like this game so much, I bought the arcade. And uh, the arcade game actually feels quite a bit different. And probably... Man, I died again. Probably just because um, I've been playing this version since I was, like, 14, 15 years old. I actually kind of prefer this version. I think it plays a little bit better. Even though, obviously, the, the arcade version has better graphics. This version also has one extra level. Like, the last level of this game where you actually, like, go into the castle. You know, there's, like, the fake ending where, like, you, you rescue the king and queen. But then they're like, oh, you got to go in here and get somebody else. Like, that's all new. Like, in the arcade, that really was the end of the game. But uh, for the Genesis version, they added a whole extra level. Normally, I don't like getting on the animals because I feel like you're like a sitting duck, but... If you can get the dragon that uh, spits fireballs, that that's like the best uh, animal to get. We used to always chase the civilians and like pretend like we were... It's funny because I always, you know, I always, I don't know what that thing is called, a gnome or whatever, you know. I, I always hit him with the axe and everything to, to build up my magic, but then I hardly ever use the magic in this game. never want to get stuck behind uh, by two people like that. I'm just going to roast these chicks. See, he also has pretty cool magic now that the girl, the lady fighter, oh see, I should have saved my magic. The lady fighter has, uh, I can't remember their names, I'm sorry, I feel lame, but uh, she has the best magic, but she has like the weakest attack. Uh, if I remember correctly, I think this, the dwarf here, I think he has the, ooh, I died again. Um, of course we're going to continue. Uh, he has the strongest attack with the weakest magic, which is fine for me because I don't really like using the magic that much. Goodness. Alright, is he going to let me pause it or what? Oh, good, it's paused. Alright, so, well, hold on a second. So this is really pure aisle and... I mean, I don't know. I just think it's, it's funny because it's like to this day, like I'm 40 years old, almost 41, and I still do this. So so now he's gone, right? Uh, so, and my friend, his Stuart was his name, by the way. Stuart and I used to always do this. So at the end of this little interlevel thing or whatever, as soon as the guys run out, you have like a few seconds. And we always run and position ourselves right over the fire you know, for the obvious reason. And then we used to sit there and be like, oh, I don't know. Even to this, I don't sit there and do that anymore. But even to this day, it's like become habit that at the end of that thing, I have to get over the fire and have him like, you know, spread his legs. Otherwise, you know, I don't know, it's bad luck or something. I don't really know. Oh, let me, sorry. Let me, let me pause it and we can do uh, comments real quick. Um, go up. Someone says, oh, no, I'm 30 minutes late. Uh, you didn't really miss anything. Don't worry about it. Um, yeah, wallet hurt with the Legos. That's definitely right. Uh, someone says, streets 
Streets of Rage or Golden Axe. Okay. Uh, best beat em up on the Genesis is Streets of Rage 2. All right. But I'll say the second best beat em up is Golden Axe. And then the third best beat em up is uh, the original Streets of Rage. So I'll put this one between the two first Streets of Rages, and then Streets of Rage 3 can, can go somewhere else. I uh, wish I'd never gotten rid of my original Genesis. We well, can always just get another one. I mean, isn't I mean the Genesis is still cheap compared to like other game systems, right? Like it's not as cheap as it used to be. I remember seeing someone complain about how the sound and the Turbo Grass. Well, we're not playing the Turbo Graphics version of Golden Axe because it's awful. So, um, yeah. Oh, Zach, Zach Fu. Uh, thanks. Uh, I appreciate uh, the donation a lot. Uh, hope you're enjoying the Red Wings cup still. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's on the shelf. I don't even drink out of it because I don't want to make it dirty. So uh, it's May. Who's your pick for Monaco and the 500? Uh, well, I don't know. I got to think about that. Um, I mean, because there's who you want to win and then there's who's going to win, right? Uh, but I don't want to bore everybody with motorsports talk. So uh, I've got a bunch of arcade boards. Charlie says he has a bunch. So, Charlie, are you just playing with a... Um, Super gun? Because you were saying you want to get an arcade machine. I have a super gun. Those are really handy too. So um remember seeing Neo Geo prices as a kid. Yeah, I mean Neo Geo was never Neo Geo is probably at least if you um if you get like a CMVS or something, so you can play the MVS games, the arcade games, those are still cheaper now than they were buying them new back in the day. So um Aladdin's Castle, yeah. Uh, Jimmy, thank you also very much. I really appreciate that a lot. Um, it helps the show. So, uh, miss old school beat em ups. Yeah, I agree. He says, so Joseph says, I feel something's missing from the new retro style games that try to pull off beat em ups. I agree a hundred percent. Uh, I just got my Vita out of the closet and like charged it back up. Uh, because I, there's some game called like 99 Vitas or something. It's not bad, but it's like you play it and it's just, it's not the same, and I don't really know why. Um, he says, love Jimmy. Different. Oh, that's Jimmy and Joseph. Sorry. Uh, Jimmy says, love the channel. Thanks, man. Uh, check out Dragon's Crown. Oh, that's people talking to each other. Um, yeah, Charlie, you're still in search of a candy cab. Yeah, I mean, the prices are just going up on those things. It's ridiculous. Uh, I got really lucky. I got my Astro City for, like, I want to say I paid four fifty for it. It needed a little bit of work, but, like, it worked, you know? Like, it was just really dirty, and, like, the buttons that it had were, like, not the right... They, they didn't even match each other, you know? It was just, like, a kaleidoscope of, of different buttons on it and stuff. But, like, so what? Like, I mean, buttons cost, like, two bucks a pop, and, like, I took the whole thing apart and just gave it, like, a real solid cleaning, but, like, the monitor's okay. It could probably stand to be, uh, uh recapped, but it's fine. Um, there's a place now, I can't remember what it's called, but there's some place where you can actually box up your monitor chassis and, like, ship it, and they'll do all the recapping for you. But, um, right, let me see if I can... Yeah, see, this is, there's, like, a similar cheat to this. It, ooh, she got me. Uh, there's a similar cheat to that in Streets of Rage 2. Hey! Well, at least I killed the first one. And then there's bugs like this. Like, I'm just hammering the attack button. It's just doing this. So I, I consider that a bug anyway. And then now you want to try and just get the one... Yeah, get the one guy out. But then that happens. But that's okay, because then we just start doing this business again. It's funny. I hear all these people outside my office door. And it's kind of... It's kind of distracting. They can probably hear me too, but I don't know why I'm so annoyed. They're all out there studying and stuff, and I'm here playing video games. See, it's funny, even if you're playing one player, they get, like, enough gnomes show up so that there's, like, enough magic for two people. Hmm. I saw someone out of the corner of my eye talk about Papri, and I got, I got something to say about that in a minute.
kind of rusty. I could blame the controller, but I won't. All right, so now this night guy is going to come out. So now we're going to go ahead and barbecue these guys. You want to do that because, like, this night guy really, like, he has a really long reach uh, with his sword. So you got to really stay away from him. I think even if you, if you're not careful when you do this, like, charging and jumping maneuver, like, he can tee off on you like you're a baseball. Oh, someone says uh, Gilius's axe should be gold because it's golden axe. I don't get that because in the arcade, I'm pretty sure his axe was golden, and I don't know why they changed it to pewter or something uh, for the home system. people. Or I'm going to just pause it right now because I'm going to read the comments here. So, uh, I'm going to go pretty far up here. Uh, Corey's showing up. That's pretty sweet. Uh, Charlie says it's an East Coast issue. They just never come up over here. Yeah, I mean, it's harder to get a candy cab. I mean, you're just you're just that much farther away from Japan, right? So, uh, that's definitely not helping. Um, I mean, obviously, you could find one for sale here on the West Coast, but then you have to pay for freight, so that kind of sucks. Uh, so you guys mentioned this Paprium game. Unless I'm confusing Paprium with a different game. Um, weren't they running some kind of thing where, like, they were giving, like, referral links to, like, anybody that wanted one? Uh, and then they could get a discount on the game or something? I'm pretty sure that was Paprium. Whenever that happened, I started getting all these people leaving comments on my videos with those links in it. And it was, like, filling up my spam box. And that was, like, really annoying. Like, that's that's really not a good marketing strategy if you think about it for a minute. Because, like, you're going to end up annoying a lot of people on the Internet. Because then if those people turn around, like, hey, can we get you to review our game? Like, no way. Anyway. Uh, ooh, someone called uh, Sold Sanka. I, I don't know. Anyway, but he says it's 442 in Finland. Uh, that's awesome that you're here from Finland. I just got – I haven't shown him yet, but – I've gotten two postcards from Finland in the last week. That's really sweet. Uh, Conan looking guy was Axe Battler. Um, yeah, that is weird. Um, but that guy actually was based off of Conan. So it's not just like he's not just Conan looking. He's more like a Conan ripoff. I always say Conan because of Conan O'Brien, but it's Conan. We always say Conan the Barbarian and then Conan O'Brien. It's not Conan the Barbarian. Maybe it is. I don't know. Maybe that's just what I say. Um, I think Death Adder was supposed to have the gold. Maybe you're right. Is that it? Because in the arcade, when you kill Death Adder, his axe like spins up in the air. I remember I was having such a hard time getting a good like a capture of that when I was doing that episode because the easiest way to kill that guy is to get him kind of off the screen in the corner, but then you get to see the cool animation. So when you kill him, the axe goes and like spins up in the air and then like lands in his chest when he's on the ground and all his blood spurts out. It looks really awesome, but uh, when he's off the when he's off the screen, then it doesn't really work that good. Uh, oh my god, we have someone from Italy too. It says it's three forty three a.m. in Italy, dude. That's cool. Uh, Jimmy says please stream live every night of the week. Well, I can't do that, but uh, but what I will say, you know, I've been kind of talking about this on Twitter about you know maybe trying to like rent an office and maybe even having to start a Patreon to try to fund that, which I'm still, we'll see. But, you know, part of it is I really want to try to commit more to, to the, doing the show. And part of that is that I want to start streaming maybe even every week. I mean, that's kind of my intent. I'm not promising I'm going to do that, but that's why I'm kind of here doing this because I'm trying to find like a viable, easy solution for streaming so that I can do it more often. Because like everybody always says that you should stream if you have a YouTube channel, like, uh, twice I've had, uh, well, I can start the game again, but, uh, you know, twice I've had like, a, you know, this Google, like I, for those of you who don't run a YouTube channel, you wouldn't know about this, but, uh, once your channel gets to a certain size, like, I don't know, 10,000, I think the first mark is like, see, now I missed the, now I missed the campfire because I was talking. Uh, once your channel gets to some certain size, somebody from Google actually reaches out to you and like offers to help you with your channel like you know to be like a channel manager kind of thing but you only get access to them for like a week and they're always like pushing uh to um 
to stream. Like, oh, you need to stream more. They look at my channel like, yeah, you need to stream more often. And I'm always like, what about my channel makes you say that I should stream? But I think that's just because I don't know what I'm talking about. Because I think that streaming is just really good for helping, like, just build an audience and, like, you know, build, like, a like a loyal following for what, you know, for whatever that's, if that's an accurate uh, term. But, because, you know, the vast majority of your, your subscribers really are just... They, they saw a video you made and they liked it, and so they, they hit the subscribe button. And they're not really, like, fans of the show for, you know, what that's worth. Like, the actual fans you have is a much lower number. But I guess, I guess if you stream more often, you get, you build more of a personal thing with the audience. I, I'm just guessing that's why they tell you to stream, so. But also, it's fun, and it's a lot easier. Streaming is a lot easier than doing produced content, and so sometimes it's fun to at least be able to do something where I can interact with you guys that doesn't involve, like, a, a, a video that took me 100 hours to make. Get away from me. These skeletons really are, I think, the hardest um, enemies in the game. Like, there's there's some, like, bosses or mini-bosses that I would rather deal with uh, than these skeletons. Especially, I think, later in the level, there's, like, black or dark gray skeletons, if I remember correctly. just they move faster and you know I mean it doesn't help that I'm kind of distracted but uh, that's no excuse where are you going come here this guy really doesn't want to get hit all right now we're filled up on magic so that's good if I remember correctly this level doesn't have a boss and so I think when you get to the end and you have like all the skeletons up in your business I think that's when you want to go ahead and See, the other, part, the other problem is once you get kind of locked into that multi-hit animation, it's harder to move. Like, I knew I had a guy charging up behind me, but there's kind of nothing I could do about it. The heck? Alright, we have to use another continue. This skeleton will even swat you out of midair. I want to say now is when I can use it. Well, let's just do it. See, it doesn't even kill any of them. But it weakens them, so it's... It's not like it's... It's not like it's useless. Yeah, so I picked a good time to use the magic. Unfortunately, we had to use it around a new life, so like getting a piece of meat from this guy is not going to help us at all. See, watch. See? It's roasting. So then they tell you that you were uh, you were on the back of a great eagle. So that's pretty cool. I think. And this is cool because now it's like it's so crazy. Like the eagle like docked in some kind of like skyport, and then you I think you can kind of get some of these guys. Yeah, there you go. These guys are stupid. So get out of here. Let's see, it's cheap, but you gotta do what you gotta do. But I just thought it was cool. Like the eagle, like you know, just like pulled into the port. He's just kind of like chilling so you can get off. Thought I could time it.
Harryhausen did Clash of the Titans too, right? Hmm. So this little area kind of at the... Like the outside of the castle here is also where if you do the little one-on-one -on -one fighting thing, that's where that takes place. Feels like cheating, you know, but then like one false move and, and they'll nail you. And I think if you get hit at all by these guys, I think it takes like one full health bar away from you. I could just hit him with the magic, but honestly, what's the point? Almost screwed up right there. Is this exciting to watch? Sorry. Yeah, the rolling back attack. I just don't... <laughs> Try to get fancy. Uh, I just don't ever really use it. I don't know why. I don't really use that thing where you can jump really high in the air and come down. And, like, hold the axe underneath you either. I don't, I don't know why. I don't have anything against it. Okay, so in the arcade version, if I'm not mistaken, uh, this would have been the, the end of the game right now. See, it's funny. We don't even need this magic, but if you don't... If you don't... Get rid of the gnomes, they'll hang around for too long. So these guys are just kind of here to soften you up. But see, you don't want to use your magic because, like, after you get rid of these guys, worse guys are going to show up. stream in uh, 720p instead of 1080p, only because I think that this computer can't really handle uh, doing 1080p. Um, although, honestly, I did that in response to the fact that sometimes the frame rate's getting a little bit jumpy and it seems to not matter, so maybe I could have done it in 1080p. I mean, I think that Sega Genesis looks the same in uh, 720p as it does in 1080p as it does in 240p. Okay, so now these are the last guys, and see with here... If I'm not mistaken, in the arcade, you can keep killing the skeleton and the new ones just come back. So you gotta not get distracted uh, by them. Alright, I think I have another continue. If not, we're moving on to something else. Okay, last continue. Somebody wants to know if I'll play Ayrton and Senna's Super Monaco GP next. I don't know. I like that game, so... I won't be putting on a clinic or anything, but... Oh, get out of there! Alright. Ooh, I think we can... We can at least kill this guy, because... I guess in the home version, the skeletons don't come back, so that's nice. Come here and take your freaking medicine. I 
guy's really ripped. See, that's what it is in the arcade. His axe is golden, but for some reason on the Genesis version, it's just like brown. All right, let's I'll turn it on. See, so here, see, now he's like, but... I have a feeling that he might have been taking order. See, in the Genesis version, it was a puppet regime. So, uh, so now we got to keep going. And the thing is, like, I'll, I mean, we only have one life left and no continue, so it's not going to last too much longer anyway. But if you if you see this level, it really does seem like it was added as almost an afterthought, just to make the game somehow uh, better than the arcade version, I guess, but um, I don't know. It just doesn't look anywhere near as cool. Come here. Here you want to like just try to lure these guys down here and then you just you can kind of throw them into the pit or you can if you're not careful you can throw yourself in Yeah, you gotta be careful because I mean you can totally uh, you can fall into these pits. And in our case, that would be game over, so we don't want that. Ooh. Well, we're almost at game over anyway, so. Okay, finally he gave up. Good. All right. All right. That's game over, right? Yeah. Okay. So let's. Uh, well, let's check comments first, uh, and then uh, we'll load up something else here. Uh, oh man, I missed. I missed a lot here. So. Thank you, Charlie. Back and forth. Okay, here we go. I found it. Okay. Uh, have you watched Cobra Kai yet? No, I've seen like the ads for it, like on Twitter and on um, YouTube. Is it good? I mean, I like uh, Karate Kid, so back in the day. Uh, oh my God, someone is 345 in Poland. Awesome. I don't, why are you up at 345? I'm glad you are, but uh, Creative Assassin, um, thank you. I'm glad you like the show. Somebody else says Cobra Kai is awesome. Uh, you should do a live stream of a magazine read through. I don't know. I've thought about that, but I mean, they wouldn't be nearly as good. I, don't, I guess I don't really see what having it be live would do to make it better. So, um, somebody wants to know why is there such a stigma with Patreon? Honestly, I think it's because a lot of people. I don't know. I mean, I don't want to be negative, but it's just like everybody starts a YouTube channel, starts asking for Patreon money, and it's like, what are you doing? that somebody should be that you think someone should be paying you it's it's like if i grabbed a guitar and couldn't play at all i couldn't play a note and went and sat out on the street and put like a coffee cup in front of me and was just like not i don't know i, I mean i guess that seems like a mean thing to say and i don't mean it that way but i just think that like when you have all these people asking for that i think that puts a negative stigma on it for everybody and it's 
I'm sure that if I started a Patreon campaign, I'd get a certain amount of people being like, oh, now he's taking Patreon. And I, it's like somehow I don't want that stink on me. I don't. I know that's stupid because I'm cutting off my nose despite my face. I don't know. Why does the like the, the exposure keeps changing? I have like a light right here. I think that's the problem. So I should stop waving my hands around. Um, someone says, I'm a little surprised you haven't mentioned Lightning Force in your list of shooters. All three of the Thunder Force games in the Genesis are awesome. So um, I do have Lightning Force. The only I'm missing Thunder Force 3. I have the other two. Um, and I hit its bias again. Uh, yeah, Jeremy, if you don't have Golden Axe, uh, you should definitely get it. Uh, Rob O'Dell says, YouTube wants uh, you to stream so they can be a strong competitor to Twitch, which has a huge advantage over them in the streaming market. Can somebody explain why Twitch is better than YouTube? Because every time I say I'm going to stream, people ask, well, is, are you doing it on Twitch? Or people have, like, um, suggested that I start doing it on Twitch. And I just don't. I honestly don't know. Like, why is Twitch better? Like, somebody tell me. Because I don't. To me, my audience is already on YouTube. So that's why I stream on YouTube. And I feel like if I went to Twitch, I'd be, like, starting from scratch. But, I mean, if. To me, it makes no difference. I just hit start stream on OBS, and it could be streaming to Twitch or streaming to YouTube. So, like, it doesn't matter to me. Uh, Charlie says, you've avoided buying this game since you have the PCB. I don't know. If you have the PCB, I don't I mean, do you really need the Genesis cartridge? And I mean, like I said, I think it's better, but it's not like it's that much better. And I also have a lot of nostalgia uh, tied up in Golden Axe. Uh, so, uh, someone said that, yes, Harryhausen did indeed do... Clash of the Titans. Uh, Submart says, is it weird playing with this, with an SNES controller? Absolutely. And uh, I was almost going to bring a six-button Sega controller that I modified for USB. And I didn't because I didn't want to carry any more stuff. But, yeah, it feels weird playing it. I, this is one of these... Um, this is one of these eight... Is it 8-bit do or 8-bit do? I, I showed it on the, the show a long time ago when I bought it. And I actually bought another one that is supposed to be coming sometime today, actually, because um, I I want to have one to just keep here at work. And they redesigned them a little bit or something. I, I was just curious because they got cheaper, too, which I thought was suspicious. So I'm wondering if they're still good. So I kind of wanted to compare it to this one and see if it's still a good product or not. Um, Derek says he's never played this game. You should definitely play this game. I've noticed no input lag with my Raspberry Pi. I mean, I don't, it's just, there's already input lag because I'm actually playing these games in the streaming window, which is suboptimal. And so even if this is adding just a little bit of input lag, it's a little bit more input lag. We can play a baseball game and I can show you. Like I can't, I can't even time my swing. Uh, somebody, uh, Jeremy says, I was interested. If you're interested in building a Raspberry Pi, I definitely uh, recommend it just because they're so cheap. Um, I don't remember what mine cost. 50 bucks maybe? Because you have to buy the, you buy like the motherboard and you have to buy an SD card and you have to buy a power supply and you have to buy a case. But I mean, it, you just get it all on Amazon and like all of it's cheap. Like the motherboard was like 35 bucks and that was the expensive part. And then it, it'll take any USB controller. So I mean, most people have a USB controller, and it also has uh, Bluetooth, so you can actually use one of these um, without having it wired, but I don't think I ever set mine up for that, so that's why I didn't do it. But, um, I mean, it's just a cool thing just to keep hooked up to your TV or something in the living room. Like, it's it's good emulation, I think. I've actually used the Raspberry Pi to record gameplay footage for the show, like if it was uh, like an arcade game that I don't have. I've used that instead of just using MAME on my computer, and I think it works pretty well. Look at those perfectly sculpted abs. The guy really did have uh, some nice abs. Uh, I don't know what happened now. It, it jumped ahead. Good luck. Okay, I found it. Uh, uh, so check out some YouTube video. Thunderheads, Axes, Gold. I believe you. I just, I'm just i only going off my memory, so I don't remember. I just remember that uh, Death Adder's uh, Axe was definitely uh, gold. Uh, somebody said I sent you a postcard a few days ago. I haven't checked the P.O. box in like two days. So it, it's very possible uh, that it's in there. And Oh, oh, there's Jay Henderson. I sent the Game Boy postcard. Thanks. That Game Boy postcard was cool. Uh, I, it's just cool because you drew it. Like I think that's really neat that you took the time to do that. 
I actually have another postcard I need to show that I just got recently where somebody drew the whole thing and it looks really neat. So I really appreciate uh, when you guys did that. Uh, Jeremy says he bought the HD Retrovision component cables. I hear good things about them. I don't have a use for them, so that's the only reason that I don't buy them. Um, I don't know what else we got. I love your magazine read-throughs. I like doing the magazine read-throughs, so, uh, so we're even. Uh, I've seen huge channels that sell a lot of merch have Patreon, so it's so unnecessary. Yeah, I don't know. I can't seem to sell merch. Uh, I, I'm still sitting on a bunch of t-shirts, but I think people are just getting burned out on t-shirts. I was thinking about making stickers, you know, like like little round stickers with like a, you know, like just little CGQ stickers. Because I could probably sell those for like $2, including postage, and those I could send around the world for like a dollar extra. So uh, I was thinking about that. I don't know. Would you guys like stickers? Like, you know, like I have... You know, my water bottle here, I put stickers all over, and I know people like to put stickers, you know, on their the lid of their laptop and stuff, but uh, anyway, whatever. Um, someone says Twitch is better than YouTube because there's more people watching streams. Yeah, but nobody knows me on Twitch, right? So I don't, would that be any good? I don't really know. Um, Derek wants to know, have you watched the NHL gaming tournament that has been going on as they play NHL 18? Uh no, I don't really watch stuff like that. Although, you know what I've been watching recently is the Tetris, classic Tetris World Championship, whatever it's called. I never knew that was a thing because I don't go to, like, gaming expos. But that's been kind of uh, entertaining to watch. Um, oh, Christian, hey, man, says the mags are on the way. I really appreciate that. Uh, Christian here sent me uh, a few magazines that hopefully I can use on the show. Uh, two of them are uh, Nintendo Powers. So um, that'll be cool. Uh, okay, I think we're pretty much caught up. Someone says yes on the stickers. That's pretty cool. Uh, Bo LaPlume, I didn't know you had t-shirts still. I only have extra larges. Um, well, if you go to Amazon, you can buy any shirt, but they're like the old stuff. They're not the cool ones that I had designed. So, um, all right, anyway. Oh, yeah, Jonas is the king of Tetris. Heck, yeah, he is. What is he, like the seven-time champion? He's like the he's like the Michael Schumacher of, of, uh, of Tetris. All right, so somebody wanted me to play uh, Super Monaco GP2, so that, that sounds good to me. So I'm not going to put on a clinic, I and mean, we won't play it for too long, but let's just play a couple tracks. It'll be fun. All right. So I definitely remember renting this one back in the day, and I, I totally just rented it because Ayrton was on uh, box. And it's cool they have these digitized pictures of him. Um, so we'll just do the world champ. I don't want to do the Senna GP because that's like not real tracks. So we'll do the world championship, but we, we won't play through the whole thing. I'll do beginner because I suck. I'm not going to waste your time. All right, so uh, skip that too. All right, round one, USA. So uh, at this time, the U.S. Grand Prix was in, it was a street circuit in downtown Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, so I actually went, I used to have to go to Phoenix sometimes for work. I'm going to do automatic only because I think with this game, when you do manual, you accidentally downshift. Okay, got it. Um, so I actually figured out on Google Maps uh, where the circuit... Like, I got the actual map of the circuit. Like, there, some of the streets have changed a little bit, so you can't totally uh, still race the exact circuit. But I, I did a couple laps, you know. So I sometimes I jokingly tell people that I've actually driven a, a car, a rental car, on a Formula One Grand Prix circuit, even though that's not... Uh, technically, you know, true. Well, it's kind of true. So this is what, I don't know why the game calls this the preliminary race, because what it really is is qualifying. I don't understand why it doesn't just call it qualifying. Are you guys sure we didn't play this the last time I streamed? Was that, was that the first Monaco GP? Super Monaco GP? I feel like we've played this game already. Crash. 
Alright, that was uh, very much a stinker of a lap, so we're in 15th place, which is very bad. Oh, someone says, I remember playing Al Unser Jr.'s Turbo Racing as a kid on my NES. Dude, that's a good game. Oh, and someone said he watched the Senna documentary, and it's good. That's the cool thing about that Senna documentary, is I think you don't really have to be... Ooh, I was that bad? That's bad. Uh, I don't think that uh, 13 seconds off a pole would qualify me in the 100, 107% rule. Um, yeah, you don't really have to be a racing fan um, to appreciate that movie, I don't think. Like, my wife watched it. Kind of lame that uh, all the other cars in this game are like the same, like they have the same livery or whatever, like the same paint job. But I mean, I don't. Maybe there's a logistical reason for that. I, don't, I, mean, I can't believe that they would just do it out of, out of laziness. All right, so we're working our way through the field. We're up to ninth. We'll see how we can do. I think I just hit a sign, so I slowed down. Part of the problem is I can't hear the game, and so I can't hear if I'm... If, when you hit something in this game, it makes a little noise. Obviously, going off the track like that's not helping either. I just heard myself downshift. I actually made, um, I think that's the problem is you can downshift in this game, even, um, even if you're doing it in automatic and the way you upshift and downshift in this game is by literally pressing up and down on the D-pad. And I actually made, and so downshift, you push up. And so I got, I had so many extra Genesis controllers that, uh, I got one of my controllers and I opened it up and I put a piece of tape, uh, over like a little conductive pad or whatever for the up so that you can't even hit it. I wasn't paying attention. Uh, so that you can't hit up and downshift. So um, I don't feel like this is very entertaining to watch. So uh, it's a good game. I don't, I don't mind that somebody um, suggested it, but uh, I think we're going to move on to something else. So switch back to this uh so i don't know if we, we don't we don't even have to really stick with mega drive uh slash genesis games i thought i had something else in mind that i wanted to play um if anybody has any suggestions i'm i'm open someone said contra i don't want to play contra did we play contra already on the stream but what's something that would be entertaining to watch play contra hard no way i suck at contra hardcore what about a Splatterhouse game? Golden Axe. All right, let's play Golden Axe 2. That'd be kind of cool because we just saw Golden Axe. But anybody else leaves anything I can... Um, so let's just start with Golden Axe 2, but uh, I'll take your other suggestions uh, under advisement. What time is it? 7.15, all right. Maybe another 30 minutes. I kind of wanted to end the stream between like 7.30 and 8, so let's try to aim for that. Uh, so for anybody that doesn't know, this was a, a Mega Drive slash Genesis exclusive, so this one did not come out in the arcade, uh, nor did Golden Axe 3. Uh, but then there was Golden Axe Revenge of Death Adder, which came out in the arcade. Uh, I don't think that came out on any home system, did it? Someone can correct me if I'm wrong. Someone said this game is the illest. Oh, that's good. Cool. Game. Still gonna be my guy. Alright, the controls are the same, that's good. 
See, I just, my thing with this game is like the graphics don't look quite as good and the animation's not as good. The music's way better. So I don't know how far we'll get. I haven't spent a lot of time playing this game, so I'm not nearly as good at it. I mean, obviously I'm not good at the other one either. But... See, and then this one, they get rid of the gnomes, and now you have to fight this magician guy who's actually trying to kill you. And then he uh, drops those little, little books instead of the potion. Yeah, no, I agree. The colors in this game don't, they don't look good. I mean, gameplay-wise, this game is good. Vintage Gamers here, that's pretty awesome. What's up, man? Can we jump off of this thing, or do you have to just keep it? Oh, I'm actually doing pretty pretty well with this. In the back of this whatever thing. Velociraptor. Okay, now we're off. I think I just prefer hoofing it, so... One subtle change I notice is that when you're you're running towards the guy and you headbutt him, you kind of bounce off of it. You bounce off of him like he's made of rubber, but somehow it, it kind of looks cool. See, and then this one you can charge your magic shot, so you don't have to use all your magic. See, but they got rid of, like, you know, Gilius used to have the, the thunder magic, which I thought was cool. I shook the whole screen. That's how you know that hurts. See, but, like, he doesn't look that cool either. Like, the graphics in this game are pretty weak. If I remember correctly, uh, the same guy that designed the first game didn't design this one. I don't think it was even... Maybe, I don't know if there's anybody on the same team or not. Ah, see, and then this game doesn't even give you enough time to go stand over the fire, so that's that's especially not cool. Uh, and then it gives you the score, like I got a score of 15.0, like out of what, I don't know. Like what does that mean and who cares? And these guys are hot pink for some reason. Is that more of a magenta? No. I don't know much about the games. They're ugly, that's the point. Even like this level, like, well, I don't know, I guess now maybe it's getting a little bit better. And then this is the part where like some of these skeletons will like reanimate and other ones won't. So like you can't trust any of the dead bodies like laying on the ground because some of them are going to get up and try to kill you. That's the first time... I'm gonna say it's the first thing I've died, but no I feel like these skeletons are a little bit easier in this game. Ooh, dark skeletons make an early appearance in this game. Unless, was I thinking of this game that has the dark skeletons, or did we fight dark skeletons in the last level of the last game? I don't want to use my magic because I'm pretty 
sure is a fun spot. Why didn't you guys tell me about that? Look, you hold B and C to do that. It's awesome. It's pretty fun, so I, let's just go through our continues again. Huh? I, don't know what else we're I feel like if I try to play a shooter or something, I mean, we could try. But... The thing with the baseball games, so like, I don't know if Charlie's still here or not, but uh, Charlie was asking like what I think are the best baseball games on the Genesis because he's trying to figure out what to buy. And I was telling him that I think the best games on the Genesis baseball games are the Super League games. Uh, they were released in Japan as Super League. So, like, the first Super League in Japan came here as um, Tommy Lasorda Baseball. And then um, Super League 91 was released here as Sports Talk Baseball. So, like, when that game came out in Japan, it didn't have all the, the voice. It would be cool if it had, like, Japanese voiceover, you know? Uh, but in Japan, it doesn't have the voice. And they added that here, I guess, to make it. Oh, cool, Charlie's still here. Uh, I guess to make it cooler, but, um, all right, let's, yeah. Um, but the thing is with the voice, the voiceover is it's, like, kind of gimmicky, and, like, after a while it just gets annoying, because, like, the, the announcer doesn't really do a good job of keeping up with the action. So, like, you can, you can get to where you're, like, two batters ahead of whatever the, probably not, you can get way ahead, and, I don't know, so that's kind of annoying, but, um, but if you turn the the play-by-play -play announcer off in that game, there's almost no sound effects because they like I guess they didn't want it to sound too busy. And so like when you're pitching, uh, there's no sound effect for the pitch and there's no sound effect for the catcher catching the ball. And so all you hear in the game is you just hear the crowd and it's pretty legit. If you hit the ball, then there's like a crack of the bat. But other than that, there's not really. Uh, a lot of sound effects, and so it sounds weird. But on the flip side, if you play Super League 91, you have the same gameplay, but because they didn't have the play-by-play -play guy, uh, you still have all these sound effects. And I don't think I've ever played a video baseball game that sounded as much like being at a Japanese baseball game as Super League 91. Uh, and it's really cool. And I, so I really I wanted to play all three of them for you guys on the stream. But uh, I don't have a Super League 91 ROM on Raspberry Pi. Um, I have it on an EverDrive, so I just need to, I need to play an actual Genesis. So I, maybe next week or something. Uh, probably most of you don't really want to watch like, a sports game stream anyway, but uh, we wouldn't have to play it for that one. I just, I just think it, uh, the Super League 91 is just a trip. Uh, just because of the sound. Someone says this is their favorite uh, music in the game. Here, let me... I'll turn it up for you. I'll stop talking for a little while.
song's over. What the hell? Oh, I'm pressing the wrong button. the wrong button. The button layout using a Super Nintendo controller is suboptimal. Alright, I'm going to pause it and then we'll go through the comments. Oh boy, Todd's here. Uh, is this the Nambla meeting? You actually just missed it. We did, we always do, uh, we get business out of the way first. So it's Nambla meeting, then we play video games. Um, so I'm going to scroll up here. Uh, Mutant League Hockey. I don't like Mutant League Hockey. Sorry, I, it's the frame rate is like too horrible on Mutant League Hockey. Uh, first games I ever got on the Genesis. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, his magic's kind of cool. I just I like the lightning uh, magic better personally. Uh, Joseph wants to know: Will you be doing more Lego or toy videos? Um, probably not any more Lego videos, only because I felt like I said what I wanted to say about Legos, and I don't want this turning into the Lego channel. Um, but maybe other toys eventually. You know, probably space them out. I mean, we want to make sure we're talking primarily about video games. So, um. Mutant Lake Hockey, Alien Storm, yeah, there should be. Sorry, I'm just trying to scroll down. I had Joe Montana Sports Talk Football 93. The digitized voice over play by play was so bad. Yeah, I actually think that might have been the same guy, too. Um, so, Bola Plumes, he's asking about the t shirts. He says, I see you have multiple sizes for the shirts on Amazon. You said you only had XLs left. So, those are different shirts. The ones that I made that I showed on the show where I, I hired that guy, Steve Nazar, to make the shirts or to, to do the artwork for the shirts, and that's the artwork on the postcards. Uh, that's the one. I only have extra larges in those. If you go to Amazon, you can buy any size shirt you want, and they make those to order. So I just – those are cool shirts. I'm not saying they're not, um, but they're just – they're not the screen-printed shirts that um, that I had made. Someone says, now you're fighting members of the, of the Foot Clan. Yeah, that's what they look like. Um, are, is the Raspberry Pi capable of playing Sega CD games? Probably. I don't see why not. I haven't tried it, so I can't say um, if it plays them well or not. Uh, I hope that isn't the Nambla that I'm thinking of. I'm pretty sure it's the Nambla that you're thinking of. Um, I was joking, though. We don't have Nambla meetings here. Uh, this game is way better than Top Gear on the Super Nintendo. Well, it's kind of apples and oranges. Top Gear on the Super Nintendo... Oh, he's probably talking about uh, Monaco GP. Um, Top Gear on the Super Nintendo has really cool music. So um, it's cool just for that reason. All right. Get some food. We can use that. Curious to see where we're going to go because obviously we're in the mouth of something. To reach the enemy's castle, which is blocked by high mountains, we reluctantly decide to march through the cave called Dragon's Throat. Kind of reminds me of, like, um, Bonk, right? Because there's the thing where you go through the dinosaur. Uh, Bo, I don't, I only have those in extra large. That's, I, I ran out. Like, those aren't made to order. I have to, I have to basically pay up front and order, like, a hundred of those shirts. And then I have to sell them. And to be honest, those shirts really didn't sell that well. And I, you know, I'm not saying I'll never make another one of those shirts, but, um, I can't say when. Just because, like I said, I don't really have, you know, however much money. I think it cost me about $1,000 to get, uh, like, a, a one run of those shirts made, so. And like I said, I just... People weren't really buying them that much. I just think people in general are kind of burned out on shirts. Like, I feel like everybody sells t-shirts these days. 
And so I think it's just cooler to find something else to sell. And, um, I mean, that's part of the reason I do the postcards. Like, the postcards are free, but, like, you know, that way, like, people who are fans of the show who just want, like, a little, like, classic gaming quarterly souvenir can just, just send me a postcard. I'll send you one back and put it up on your uh, refrigerator or something. But I even think maybe just something like the stickers is just, like, it's two bucks. Who cares, you know? Like, for some people, because those shirts were, were $20 plus shipping before I kind of put them on sale to try to get rid of all the extra larges I have. Um... I mean, that's not, for a lot of people, that's not an impulse purchase, you know, like 25 bucks. So, um, I totally get that, so. But, you know, when I when I ordered those shirts, I did, like, a poll on Twitter, and I just asked everybody, like, well, what size shirt do you wear? And then I placed the order based on, um, based on that. And it seems like most people are a size extra large, which I think, you know, if you ask me randomly, like, what I thought what size shirt most people were in the United States, I'd say extra large. But, um, so I, I placed the order based on that, and then I just ended up, like, I have probably 15 shirts left, and they're all extra large. But I don't know what, what I don't really know what else I could have done except pre-sell shirts, and I don't really want to take people's money when I don't have the product to give them. I mean, that's the other thing I could always do, is people could pre-order shirts, but then I couldn't guarantee when I'd have enough orders to put the actual order in. And I don't want to be pulling, like, a super NT kind of thing, you know, uh, where I'll take your money now and maybe you'll get your product in six months or something, so, um, yeah. Um, oh, Bo, you're saying XL is your size. If you're an XL, um, Bo, just, if you just go to my web, well, the show's website, it's not my website, but I, if you go to just cgquarterly.com slash shirts, you can, you can buy a shirt there, like, um, they're twenty bucks. They're twenty bucks shipped. I basically am doing free shipping now to try to get rid of them. So, um, but like I entered in like however many shirts are left or how many are available for sale on the on the uh, website. So as long as it lets you buy a shirt, that means I actually have one in my house to send to you. But I mean I don't want to keep talking about selling shit because that's oops, sorry for the language. Uh, just because I figured that's not people are really here to. So I want to pause it because I, I just saw uh, Demetrius. That thank thank you. You really didn't uh, need to do that. Um, but I just kind of wanted to um, talk about this real quick because so modern vintage gamers asking about uh, the Amiga gameplay. So here's the thing is kind of what I wanted to do. Um, I feel like that's going to be like a really cool live stream where I'm really going to have like here's the games we're going to play and it's going to be more structured and I want to like prepare for it. But I'd really like to do. Um, that stream over on the other channel and so doing stuff like this tonight is really like trying to like work out the bugs and figure out how all this stuff works so that i can do a live stream on the main channel and not look like a novice when i do it so um and plus obviously for that i'm actually going to bring the amiga here so that i have the real hardware the amiga by the way that todd there todd's nerd, nerd cave uh, gave me as a present for the show. So that was uh, very cool. Um, can I buy a CGQ thong? Not currently, but if I get enough people asking for one, uh, I'll, I can have some made. You guys need to get your wives and girlfriends on board with the show and then we can start making, you know, underwear. See, now this level's got pretty cool graphics. You know, like, that's some pretty cool color. Go away. Like, you can't be trusted with this. CGQ Pogs. You know, somebody asked me the other day if, um, if I ever played with Pogs. I'm, like, a little bit too old. Like, Pogs came out, like, when I was in high school. And so I, I, I wasn't into the pogs. Um, these guys are annoying me. Um, so yeah, I never got in. I mean, I don't know what your pogs came out. I guess I'm making that up. I think I was in high school. I definitely wasn't any younger than that. 
Um, so that's why I, I never did pogs. See, now I feel like I shouldn't use my magic. Oh, yeah, I definitely shouldn't use my magic. But I think as long as I don't mess with those guys, they will. Spinny attack. Three more. Okay, good. Uh, last credit. Spinny attack almost feels like cheating. But whatever. These guys just freaking die already? Okay. I gotta try to do the little. Ooh, these guys are too smart for that. We only had one magic, whatever thing, so that's not really even. Uh, Check the chat. Uh, okay, I got him. Uh, oh no, you didn't make me ramble or anything. I just, I, I you know, I don't, I don't want to make it seem like I'm live streaming because I'm trying to sell you guys stuff. So I just didn't want to keep talking about that too much. Pogs kind of sounds like some kind of STD. Yeah, I could see it being like a, a for like crabs, right? Like, oh man, I got a bad case of the pogs. Uh, I don't know what a stomper truck is. Yeah, you could send CGQ thongs to the wives that say they hate your voice. Yeah, that Eddie guy, I don't know what to say about him. <laughs> oh, Todd. All right. See, it's funny how, like, when these guys come in, come into your camp or whatever, you know, then they don't try to attack you. But that's good. Oh, that's good. I got a lot of food. What's he wearing around his neck? All right, we got a 14.4. I used to have a 14.4 modem. We passed through the long, red-hot cave, found the castle gate standing in front of us. All right, well, that's good news. Well, this looks kind of familiar. I, I feel like these guys are almost like the new skeletons, because I feel like now the skeletons aren't that hard. But these guys kind of are. In fact, their their attacks are very similar to the skeletons in the first game. Uh, someone's asking this is part three. No, this is part two. I think I have part three on the pie. I mean, we could just make it a golden axe knight, right? Because now I'm kind of curious to play three. We're going to get game over here pretty soon, because this, is, this was our last credit, and I have about one and a half lives left. By the way, notice that his axe is still not golden. Maybe they figured that after the first game they couldn't make it golden now because it would like break continuity or something. Alright, last life. Dang it.
sorry, I feel like I'm too quiet. I'm kind of running out of stuff to talk about. Be cool to at least get in the castle, right? These guys again? Ooh. This might be where I think this is where our ride's gonna end. Yep. All right, that's game over. So now I'm curious to play Golden Axe Three. So hopefully that's not gonna tick anybody off. Uh, ooh, I got an E. That's not a that's not a grade that exists uh, in this country. Uh, Christian wants to know would I ever cover more arcade stuff? Sure. Um, I love arcade stuff. So while that's loading, let me put the screen back. Uh, let's check the comments. All this talk about cardboard makes me think you guys were looking for the John Hancock live stream. Yeah, it's kind of funny. That guy, you know, he loves his cardboard, and yet he hates Nintendo Labo. So, I don't get it. Um, you don't think the Axe guy is in Part 3? That's going to suck. I guess we're going to find out here in a minute. Uh, Pete's got to go to bed. Well, I understand. Um, yeah, I'll probably, I'll probably upload this one, I guess. I don't know. I don't know why not. As long as it is in... As long as it's good quality, I'll upload it. Thankfully, there's an 8 continues cheat for Golden Axe 2. Well, where were you? I'm just kidding. You're fine. Um, I don't think anybody wants to watch me uh, do it that long. All right, Charlie. I'll see you later. Uh, okay, so let's do it. Golden Axe 3. Wow, that's lame. That Gilius isn't here? All right, well, let's just be this dude then, I guess. But that's disappointing. I just remember the panther guy from 3. Yeah, that guy. He looks pretty cool. Hmm. I don't know who I should be. No, let's do this one. No, Alex, you're good. We're going to hang out for at least a little while longer. What time is it? Oh, it's 7.45. All right, well, too late. We're playing this. I already started this game, so we're playing it. Okay, you've been released from the evil curse. Your mission is to defeat the Prince of Darkness and return with the Golden Axe. All right, well, I'll see what I can do. Whoops. Oh, that's kind of cool magic. I hit the wrong button. Sorry. Right. Can you guys hear the game? Like, I don't have any... I don't hear anything. Turn it up a little. Okay. That's not bad. I just like to at least hear it at a low volume, you know? Hey! Can I grab this guy now? Ooh, look at that. That's pretty cool. Overall, you can see it's pretty choppy, though. See, they brought back the little gnome guys. Then how do you pick... Oh, now you have to hit the button to pick it up. Yeah, I can kind of see why this game is, is not as highly regarded as the first two. Are you, like, in Egypt or something? That's a cool animation. You know, credit where credit is due. But, like, these guys remind me, like, almost like a, something out of, like, Stargate. Except those were, like, dogs. So other than the fact that they were dogs. And then is that, like, a brown river in the background? Like, what is that? Sandstorm? Oh, that guy's not dead yet. the end of the level? What? That's kind of cool. What are those, like, snail geckos or something? I 
the fat guy. Well, I guess it's kind of cool you're fighting on the back of this cart that's also apparently a rib cage. Oh, see, this kind of reminds me of like Streets of Rage now, because now you got like all these dudes dropping in. I don't know, this game's not bad, I guess, but... I feel like if this game had been released and it wasn't a Golden Axe game, maybe it would be a little bit more highly regarded. But even then, I think it's still like a real mid midfield type of game. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't this game released here in the U.S. on the Sega channel? Like, wasn't that the only way to play this game here? I'm not sure about that. Because, like, when I loaded the game up, it said, like, Japan. But I could swear this was one of those games that, if you had Sega Channel, you could download it. I never had Sega Channel. For some reason, I've had, like, multiple people, like, lately asking me to do uh, a Sega Channel video. And, I mean, I never had it, but I actually have a friend who did. I don't know. For some reason, I just feel like that's more of, like, the kind of video the gaming historian would make. Who, I mean, he makes awesome content. I'm not trying to throw shade or anything. I just that seems more for some reason to me that seems more like it's like in his wheelhouse than mine. So got some extra health there. That's nice. Oh, that background looks pretty cool. But like somehow the sprites seem less detailed. It's almost like this almost kind of looks like an Amiga game. In fact, it almost kind of looks like Defender of the Crown. Wow, that guy used his shield to block my attack. That's kind of neat. Can I still... Oh, there you go. Pokemon stuff. Alright, he's dead. Ooh, you can choose your path. What do you guys think? I think we can go. That's pretty neat. I didn't know that about the game. This is probably the farthest I've ever been into Golden Axe 3, because I just don't really ever play this game. These guys are creepy looking. These guys kind of remind me of... Uh, you guys ever seen that movie? Was it Cat Eye or Cat's Eye? It had Drew Barrymore in it when she was like a little kid. Like, I think it was the movie she made, like, right after E.T., you know? And uh, there was, like, that little gnome that would come out of the wall... And it would, like, plug her nose and then steal her breath, you know? And then the cat chased it away. I don't know. Those guys just reminded me of that. That was a creepy-ass movie. Now, this looks pretty sweet, I guess. Some hier hieroglyphics in the background there. Accidentally used the magic again. Kevin just showed up. That's cool. Jeremy's having technical difficulties, and I'll be right back. That's okay, too. Have I even died yet? I feel like this game is really easy. Of course, I'll say that, and I'll get my, my butt kicked. Someone says, full circle the D-pad, then press attack and jump together and shoot fire along the ground. I'll try it. Let me see what I can do here. Oh, well, even just pushing those two together, you do like a full 360 with your sword. That's kind of cool. Oh, I see what you're saying. It seems like too hard to pull off, but that's that's helpful. So, so thank you anyway. Someone says that Golden Axe 3 has the best music. I'll have to take your word for it, because I can, like, barely hear it. Let's try that. Ooh, what was that? I gotta be honest, this game's actually kind of grown on me just in the time that I'm spending playing it right now. Got some 
health. Some more magic. Let's get our magic all like maxed out and see what that looks like. What's that? They got a prisoner over there? Maybe I can save him. Ooh. Oh yeah, there you go. Not even a thank you. Okay. That's some sweet parallax scrolling on those clouds. So that guy's kind of creeping me out. Reminds me of the fat guy in 300. Remember that big fat guy in 300? chick on the ground. What's that guy doing? He grab a sword, help out. I don't understand what he's is he eating? He leaves her there. What a jerk. Oh there we go. I guess she was tied up. Alright, here we go. Ooh, wow. The background is where Bonk's adventure is taking place. That's fine. That was a little too long. You know, that reminds me of like the the summon spells in in uh, Final Fantasy VII. That like, you know, you get later in the game, you have these summon spells that would take like like a full minute every time you did him. It's like, you're kind of overstaying your welcome. Why are these guys hiding in the dirt? What are you doing? That's irritating. Are we done? Yeah, good. Stage 3. Oh, we got level E again, so we suck. Now we're in the dim jungle. Okay. Hopefully nobody saw the title of the live stream and thought that I was going to start screaming. Uh, people seem to like the fact that I don't do that. She was screaming. It's quite the tongue. Ooh, belly slam. Nice. Did it again. I tell you, the only thing this stream is missing right now is beer. I don't have any beer in the fridge right now. I have like a full-size fridge in my office just because somebody else gave it to me. But we are not stocked at the moment. Okay. Is there a way to... Oh, cool. I still like riding on the beasts. I feel like nobody's really hitting me that much, you know? Like, the game just seems, like, really easy. I mean, I know I'm not, you know, not, like, one-lifing it or anything, but I've never played this game this far in. Like, I'm doing pretty well, considering that. So it's funny, I, I just noticed here that uh, Joseph, 
you know, he's saying, I take a Golden Axe game exactly like the old ones with new stages. Like, I don't understand why, like, Sega doesn't do that. Like, could you imagine... Well, I guess they finally did, I guess, with Sonic Mania. Like, they basically made a game that just was, like, an old Sonic with new games. But I don't understand why these companies don't do that more often. Like, just take the engine for, like, Streets of Rage 2 and make, like, Streets of Rage 4. You know? Like, that's what people want. And then you just do it as, like, download only or something. I mean, obviously, it'd be cooler if it was on, like, a legit cart. But, you know, we see what's going on with that, you know, with this... I forgot what the name of the company is, right? But they're, they, they're doing, like, Mega Man X now on, like, a real cartridge, and they want, like, a hundred bucks for it. Like, get lost. Of course, some people will buy that stuff. And if, I mean, if you get enjoyment out of collecting that kind of stuff, then, you know, that's, that's cool, too, I guess. But I think that, you know... Putting Mega Man X on a re reproduction cartridge and asking $100 for it is kind of out of line. Wow, that just increased our maximum health. That's pretty cool. I work with a chick who looks a lot like one of these chicks. She doesn't dress like that, though. I feel like this game's like a lot of button mashing, you know? That background looks really neat. Like, that reminds me of, like, Out of This World or Another World, whichever whichever you call it, based on your home country. That looks pretty neat. Actually, the graphics in general on this level look pretty cool, I think. I don't know what year this game came out. Like, why wouldn't they give it a physical... Ow. Why wouldn't they give it a physical release? These guys look like WWF characters. I forgot I had I have full magic again, so get comfortable. Forever. Oop, I didn't kill him. Check the chat again. Uh, what do we got here? Um, yeah, okay, I got up to that point. Uh, yeah, and Final Fantasy VIII spamming Shiva. Was it Final Fantasy IX where they started doing it where the summon spells would be shorter versions and only like every tenth one was a long one? I don't remember. Yeah, Knights of the Round, a.k.a. the time it takes to make some tea. That's really no joke. Uh, Mega Man 9 and Sonic Mania were really good games. Yeah, they definitely were. Uh, I've never played the Golden Axe fighting game. Um, yeah, Sega could have bought the rights to Streets of Rage remake years ago. I don't know why they didn't. Like, why? Like, they ended up working with the homebrewer that was, and that's how they got Sonic Mania made. But their only thing with Streets of Rage remake was just to get litigious with them. I don't really understand that. Um, somebody's asking if I played Sonic Mania yet. Yes, actually, uh, a viewer of the show was generous enough to uh, give me a copy of Sonic Mania, so I have played it, and I think it's really good. But like, I love the Sonic the Hedgehog games. Um, Bare Knuckle Three. Someone said I bought the Bare Knuckle Three on reproduction cartridge. The Japanese version of Bare Knuckle Three is better than Streets of Rage Three. That is absolutely true. Uh, did you get the English translation? Because that makes it a little bit cooler. Um, although I mean, it really doesn't matter at the end of the day. 
Uh, Golden Axe 3 came out in 1993 in Japan only. Thanks. I don't know why it didn't come out here then. Like, 93 is still pretty early. Not, I mean, it's not early, but there wasn't anything else out. Like, that was still during the 16-bit console war. That seems very odd. Game Gear had one called Axe Battler. It was not like an adventure game. I don't think I've played that. I'm not really into the the Game Gear. Um, okay, we're good. All right, so uh, let's keep going. <laughs> Why are these like... Wait, what happened? Oh, I see. You have to... This seems kind of silly. Why are they coming down on these zip lines? Come on. I don't know. Gimmicky. Yeah, Joseph says, I think Sega would be in better hands if Nintendo bought it. Honestly, it probably would be. I mean, the whole thing with... Like, look at how successful the NES Mini and the SNES Mini have been. Like, whoever is running Sega now, like, how do they not say, like, oh, we should do that, you know? And But then, like, oh, we'll have some crappy company that makes clone systems make it for us. Like, I just don't get it. Like, I can tell you, though, for sure that Sega in the marketplace now does not have the following that Nintendo continues to have. So, like, even if Sega made like a Genesis classic system themselves so that and it was a top-notch product it would not sell as well as the NES mini and the SNES mini and like I can tell you that just from looking at like how the videos do on my channel and how much more popular Nintendo uh, videos are and I think a lot of that is just because Nintendo continues to build a fan base by still being relevant in the market by by still putting out modern game consoles uh, while Sega doesn't, I mean, unless you're somebody who's like, I mean, I guess you don't have to literally be my age, but, you know, you have to be an older gamer, I think, uh, to really have any, like, nostalgia for, for Sega, like, at least going back to the Dreamcast. And how many, like, new Sega fans did the Dreamcast really create, you know? I mean, I don't know, but... I mean, there's a reason that Nintendo stuff is still more popular to this day, and it's, it's really not just nostalgia, you know? And maybe the people that run Sega know that, and maybe that's why they don't want to sink money into making a proper, uh, you know, classic console. I, I really don't know. I mean, how much really goes into it? But then, I mean, you can also see that having something like this Raspberry Pi... I mean, if you if you have even a little bit of technical know-how, you can put a Raspberry Pi together. I mean, I'm not really as computer literate as I was 20 years ago, and I still manage to do it. And even if you can't, like, you can just you can buy one with everything already loaded up on it, and you know you can just get like a, a Sega style uh, USB controller, and you know even if you just wanted to play Sega games and get sort of a rough approximation of a genuine experience. It's funny, if I had known I was going to play nothing but Genesis games, I would have bought that I would have brought that other controller to work today instead of instead of this one. I, I didn't really have much of a plan. Or enough of one at least. The fat guys get darker, or is it just me? Like, now we're back in the desert again. Die. 
Oh, now we're dead. We have four credits, that's pretty good. Hey, maybe we'll beat this game. I'm gonna roast these chicks, they're pissing me off. Or I guess wash them with my water magic. This game's start finally like starting to toughen up a little bit, I feel like. But like how long have you been playing it? Um, maybe that's good. But I don't know. Thanks, Bo. You really didn't. I mean, you don't have to buy a shirt and do that, but um, I really appreciate it, man. Thanks. Now, I'll keep an eye out for that postcard. I'm really having a good time with the postcards. Like, I, I feel like that was, like, one of the best ideas I've ever had as far as the show goes. Like, it's just fun, you know? And it's just one of those things where, like, you know, I mean, some someday I won't be doing the show anymore, I'm sure. Like, you know... Hopefully not for a long time, but, you know, things like those postcards are something that I'm always going to hang on to. You know, and like when I'm an old man, I can pull the box of postcards out of the closet, you know, and like, oh, remember when, remember when I had my YouTube show? Okay. That's kind of cool, the light changed, and now it's like late afternoon or early evening or something. Of course, now we get a bunch of food that we can't use. <sighs> My butt's starting to hurt. Uh-oh. Why wait? it for a second sorry I haven't had anything to drink for like two hours might as well check the chat while we're at it um yeah thanks again Bo man I, I really appreciate that um uh, people are just talking about why Sega sucks now um Turbo graphics. All right. Um, uh, yeah, name don't I see? I hate talking like that because I don't want somebody to think that like I'm thinking about quitting YouTube anytime soon. I'm really not. I'm just making the point that you know, at some point it'll happen. You know, maybe it won't be for like five or ten years, but you know, I don't think anybody wants to watch like an old man, uh, you know, talking about video games on YouTube. You know, well, that'd be kind of funny actually. I guess you know. Hey kids, today we're gonna talk about Atari. Ooh. Oh, these guys have four arms, that's the problem. Everybody can block your attacks in this game. There we go. Dead? No. Oh, there we go. Right in the legs. Alright, cool. End of the level? Yes. I don't like this when they're in the ground business. 
but I could use some food, so I'll take that. Well, that wasn't so bad this time. Get the fire in there. It's important. So I have the the cameras like on a cardboard box, so that's why it's jiggling every time I move the desk. Someone says there's there's an 80 year old woman playing Skyrim. I didn't know that. That's pretty sweet. By the time you're old, we'll be old. That's honestly true. I hadn't really thought about that. That'd be embarrassing to die by falling off of a ledge. Ooh, oh, I jinxed myself. Those guys are kind of have a cool color scheme. Though. This game's long, isn't it? How long have I been playing this game for? Is CGQ on Twitch? No. Is Twitch better? Again, like I I'm I'm down to move or whatever, not well not move, but oops, crap. Um Like I said, why is why is Twitch better? Yeah, someone says honestly, who do you think your demographic is? Well, that's very true. I mean that's that's part of why I enjoy doing the show, I think, though, is because, you know, I feel like most of you guys are around the same age as me, you know, like, you know, plus five years, minus ten years or something. Stream both at once. Can you do that? I, mean, I guess it doesn't matter, right? I hadn't even really thought about that. guy go was, was there a ledge or something I'll take it it's kind of hard to double tap with this controller Oh yeah, so someone says I can I can stream both. Like I don't. You kind of can, but if you have a partnership on either, you can get in trouble over it. Well, I mean, I don't. I'm definitely not down to get in trouble. So. Get a running start here. Oh, I hit jump a little bit too soon. Maximum health increase, that's very cool. That's kind of a neat thing about the game, it almost gives it sort of like an action RPG kind of vibe. It's too bad like it doesn't have like your other stats going as well, but even just having that is pretty cool. Hey! I feel like you can get stuck in like these animations or something. Button mashing. 
I was trying to do that little like 360 sword swing thing or something, but it didn't really work. What's this guy doing? See, the other thing that I would like to do that requires, like, more bandwidth and is why I kind of want to, you know, try to just do this here instead is I think it would be cool. Like, you know how, like, the My Life and Gaming guys have, like, guests on their live stream? Like, that just seems cool because then you always have somebody to talk to. Like, it's kind of hard because, like, I've been sitting here playing for two hours, but it's like having a really one-sided conversation. But, you know, then if I quit talking, then, like, maybe it's less entertaining. Although you guys seem to be talking amongst yourselves pretty well. Uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, thank you, Anthony. Um, glad you like the show. I gotta say, they have having almost 100 people uh, hanging. I think we were up to like 90 at one point. Like, that's pretty good, I think, for, for this being a small channel. Like, that's pretty nice. I don't know how many people would show up if I streamed on the other channel, but... That would probably make me nervous. That's like too big of an audience, you know, watching me play video games. But you know, I like, yeah, coffee talk, exactly. Talk amongst yourselves. Um, I don't know, I just think like, it'd be kind of cool like if I could get like other people, like other YouTube people who I like, you know, like for instance, I, you know, like Demetrius from, from um, Modern Vintage Gamer or, which way? I'm gonna go this way. Um, you know, or even just like the guys from My Life in Gaming, or like uh, Neil from Retro Man Cave. I mean, I can just think of plenty. I mean, I'm just scratching the surface, but um, it'd just be cool to have like people that I like on YouTube be able to come on the show. You know, even if it wasn't like we weren't playing games, you know, it could even just be having a conversation with somebody. Um, I don't know. I just think that kind of stuff would be neat. Maybe I'm wrong. But it'd be worth trying. That's my point. Doing. See, you got stuck again. So nobody, nobody seen cat, cat's eye, really. Streamer tax gets real with some harder games when chat keeps moving. Sorry, I guess I don't understand what you're trying to say. But who's this eagle man? Oh, I got, never mind, I got full magic. Let's take care of these guys. See, I can check chat while that animation is going. Hey, Austin's here. That's cool. This streaming is screaming, exactly. Got some good internet for Yeah, Oscar says, I think as a YouTuber, you'll get more views over here than on Twitch. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, the entire audience of, of the show is over here. So I just feel like if I go um, over to Twitch, it's just like, who the heck am I over there, you know? I also kind of feel like, and maybe I'm wrong. I'm just kind of talking out of my backside. But I just kind of feel like the audience over on Twitch is a little bit younger. And so I don't know how much they really want to deal with me. This guy's got a nasty attack that I don't care for. We gotta do like. Oh, never mind. He's got that covered too. Of course, he just blocks it between. Come on. This guy's hard. If anybody's got any tips, uh, I'm all ears. Oh, that, that kind of helped. This guy's making me hungry. I could go for some chicken right now. I had a container of yogurt for dinner before I started the stream, so... I'm a bit peckish. Oh no. Oh, 
Oh, I see. Dividing my attention. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Although I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to like give the impression that if I wasn't streaming right now, somehow I'd be like way better at video games because I wouldn't be. But, um, but yeah, I definitely like it makes me feel weird because it's like sometimes I'm playing a game and I'm not playing it very well, and I just feel like, well, who wants to watch me like do a mediocre job of playing a game, you know? But I guess it's not about that, right? I mean, I get it. You know, if I was watching like one of my favorite YouTube post stream it really wouldn't be about watching the it's almost like the game is just like our excuse for all being here together because otherwise what am I doing I'm just having like a monologue I feel like I've been fighting this boss for like the last 10 minutes if you're playing a giant kicking chicken guy I would suggest barbecue sauce that's what I'm saying That move looked a lot like uh, one of the Streets of Rage. I'm starting to really think that this game was worked on by some of the same folks as uh, some of the Streets of Rage games. Because some of these animations look very similar. Finally got him. Yeah, now, it's, now we're in some kind of weird animation. So we didn't kill him, of course. Nice job. However, it won't be so easy next time. It wasn't that easy this time, buddy. Of course, he flies away. Excuse me, it's called a griffin. Yeah, you're right. So I'm not. What do I do? Oh man. Stream tax. Uh... Okay, good. Finally, somebody's seen Cat's Eye. Thank you. Watched it a lot when I was a kid. Can't remember any of the other stories other than the troll. Oh, that's right. Was was Cat's Eye one of those that had more than one story? It was. That's right. Wasn't that Cat's Eye was where there was that, um, like, clinic for people who wanted to quit smoking, but they would, like, give you electroshock therapy? And then they would actually, like, I remember one thing. It was, like, they had, it was a pretty twisted movie. Um, they had, like, this chamber where the whole floor was electrocuted. And, like, this guy, like, they had people that would follow you around. And, like, this guy snuck a cigarette. And, like, he thought that he got away with it. And then, like, they kidnapped him and took him back to the clinic, and he gets there, and they have his wife in in the chamber, and she's the one getting, like, not electrocuted, but, you know, getting, like, shocks all over her feet. Um, yeah, I probably watched that when I was way too young. Yeah, exactly, like Creepshow. Creepshow's awesome, too, though. Those places all stole that from the old EC comics that I've been talking about lately, the, um, uh, Tales from the Crypt. But that's okay, because it's a cool, um, it's a cool idea for a movie. Isn't that kind of wasn't it, was there that grind grindhouse? Wasn't there a movie that came out like ten years ago or something that was like a horror movie, but it was three mini movies? Am I making that up? Tales from the Dark Side, or the new Twilight Zone, or the Outer Limits. Man, the old Twilight Zone is where it's at. Tales from the Dark Side was always like a really bad knockoff, I thought, of Twilight Zone. Like, they just made it a little bit, I don't want to say gorier, but, you know, it had more of a horror aspect to it. But I'm really surprised you never hear people talk about Twilight Zone anymore. It's such a good show. Way ahead of its time, too. Can you, like, go in these doors? Like, I want to go in them. Oh, okay. That came out in the 80s, yeah. Was a true story, Cat's Eye? Yeah, I kind of doubt it. Of course, we get food again when we have no use for it. That's just bad luck, though, man. Not anything that the game did wrong.
I was just talking about an episode of the Twilight Zone with somebody recently. I, I forgot why. Oh, because there's some... Is there some TV show, like, uh, uh, I don't know if it's on TV or if it's on streaming service, but it's called, like, The Last Man on Earth or something, but it, it's got one of the old Saturday Night Live cast members in it, and, but it's sort of like a semi-comedy. It was my coworker was telling me about it, and it remind for some reason it reminded me of that Twilight Zone episode with Burgess Meredith, where like he kind of, it's almost like he wished he was the last person on Earth because he didn't like people and just wanted to read books all day, and then like some kind of apocalyptic event happened, so that he was the last person on Earth, and he was like, oh books, books, and he was going to go to the library and, and read the books in the rubble, and then he he dropped his glasses and broke them, and so then he couldn't. He couldn't read that that that's like a classic Twilight Zone plot twist like he got what he wanted but um, but now he's screwed because now he can't now he can't read and he has no one to talk to what's that thing up above those chandeliers, I feel like if I get you know, that kind of thing, I was gonna happen. How much longer can this game really be? Like, I feel like I could have beaten the first Golden Axe like twice over in the time it's been taking me to play this. I feel like we've been playing this game for like an hour. You guys can tell me if I'm wrong, but didn't we load this game up and it was like 7.15? Like, what time is it now? Dark out. I'm not complaining, I'm just saying it's a long game. What time is it? It's 830. <laughs> I don't want to throw these chicks in the pit, but I feel like they're I feel like they're too smart for that. I don't want to get knocked into the pit, so. kind of has like a last level of the game kind of feel to it, so hopefully it's the last level of the game. If I can. There you go. No! Let's see if we can get this guy in. There we go. It's cheap, but it works. Those guys are bright red, so you know they're going to be hard. I don't like where this one's going. See, the fact that they're giving you, like, food and magic tells you how hard of a fight this is going to be. So we'll leave that food there, because we're probably going to need that in a minute. Someone says we're getting close to the end, so that's good. It'd be cool just to play at least one game to the end today. Oh, whoops. I didn't mean to do that. Hit the wrong button again, but maybe that's good. These guys are tough, so...
See, that reminds me, there's like that big wrestler dude in uh, Streets of Rage 2 who like grabs you and like bites your face. No, I wasn't thinking of the Blanca guy. There's like a different guy who has like a painted face. It's like when you, um, you're you in the uh, baseball stadium and then you get on the pitcher's mound. You take the elevator all the way down. You're fighting all those guys. And then you get to the bottom and there's like that. It's like some kind of like fight club looking thing. Like that guy. No, it's not that guy. Who am I? Th it's not the Blanca guy either. It's one of the bosses. It's the guy with the boxing gloves. He grabs you and like bites your face. Oh, we finally killed one of the guys. That's good. Yeah, I agree. It looks like they're wearing high heels because they have those ringy things around their ankles and it looks like it's part of the shoe, you know? It looks like the guy's rocking some Jimmy Choo's or something. Yeah, the boxer on the ship, Austin, exactly. I hate that guy. By the way, Austin... Austin here is pretty much a gameplay expert in everything he plays, so Austin, if you got any uh, Golden Axe 3 tips, I'm all ears. have to fight that griffin again at the end of the game are we that guy's a jerk it's a nice view button one more griffin fight that sucks I didn't notice how many continues we had left um, the last time I continued, so... Who's this guy? He looks like one of the play the the that panther dude that you can play as. It's funny you say that, Austin, because I feel like I'm always on a Genesis kick, you know? Like, people always ask me what my favorite system is, and I can never, like, answer. Like, oh, I don't have an answer for that. I love them all. But every time I stream, I'm like, okay, what Genesis games am I going to play for the stream? Maybe, I think it's like, I feel like the Genesis is, like, my comfort zone, you know? Like, I don't want to play, like, like a, a Nintendo game and suck at it. I don't, I don't know why. Like, I grew up with the Genesis. Well, I grew up with the NES, too, but... I don't know why we haven't done an NES stream, to be honest with you. Like, I could bring the NES Mini to work. That'd be cool. Attack and jump at the same time to spin attacks. Yeah, they, they work okay. Fortunately, I regained... Oh, we missed it. Oh, well. What's our score this time? 12. 
Oh, we got a C. That's not bad. It's better than an E. The Gate of Fate. Chris, did you ever play Arrow the Acrobat uh, or a Haunting Starring Guy? No. Can you save progress on Pi? I'm pretty sure it has save states. I don't really mess around with save states, but... Um, but I'm pretty sure you can... There are save states on here. But I don't, I don't even know what key it's mapped to or whatever on the controller, so... I can just stay here and keep hitting him in the fist if that's what... It seems very anticlimactic. Oop, there he is. I wish I had some magic. I didn't think so. Turn around! See, he got frozen again. It's weird. Alright, I'll see you later, Derek. I'm getting tired too. We're definitely done after this game's over. Uh, I don't know what what I'll try to stream next week, but because I still want, yeah, the bird definitely did not skip leg day, but because um, I really wanted to show you guys those baseball games. Oh, it's game over. Well, was that was that at least the end boss? Does somebody know? Was that the end boss? Um. Pressing back and attack. And, yeah, all right, well. I don't know all the special moves, I guess. Oh, that's cool. It shows you the route you took. So I didn't even think about that, but that's true. If you if you pick different routes, then it's like playing the game all over again. So um, so that'd be pretty cool. Uh, I don't know. Do I have anything else I want to say before I, um, before I tap out? Um, I think we're done. I mean, how long was the stream? Two hours and 45 minutes. Hopefully my wife's not mad at me when I get home. Uh, she won't be. She's fine. Um, so I guess just thanks, everybody, for hanging out tonight. Uh, hopefully, I, nobody said anything, really, that about the stream quality uh, not being good. So hopefully we're good. So I'm just going to leave all this stuff here in my office. And uh, that way I can just stream again uh, soon. So um, I guess that is going to do it for uh, this episode of CGQ Live. And I will see you guys again soon. Thanks for hanging out.